Welcome to Trading Day, 48 hours before the deadline. We're on tomorrow night at 5pm and then for the finale on Wednesday night from 7pm. Anal analysing all 18 clubs. Let's get straight into it after a big day. David King and Lee Montagna, welcome to you. We'll get right, your Tom. thoughts soon. Ralphie, there's been some movement. Bring us up to speed. G'day, guys. Uh, Patrick Lipinski is officially a Collingwood player after the Pies gave up pick 43 to the Dogs. Uh, Peter Laddams has nominated Sydney as his club of choice, so let the haggling begin between Port Adelaide and Sydney. GWS had interest in Chad Wingard, so a decade after he told the Giants to get nicked when they threatened to draft him. He has again rebuffed them today with some great social media swag. Uh, he will not be going there. And the late breaker, the big one. Now, Rory Lobb's manager, Colin Young, is adamant tonight the Lobb deal is dead. It is dead in the water. He says it is off given the size of the deal from GWS. Now, I've just spoken to Colin Young. He says it's off. As far as I know, there is no coming back from this. These deals don't come up very often and I thought it could be a win-win for all parties, um, but we just couldn't get it done. He tells me that Lobb was prepared to take a significant pay cut, but it just wasn't going to happen. The GWS deal was not significant enough, not only in terms of money, but also tenure. So he says, no negotiating position, no bargaining position. This deal is just done. He will play for Fremantle next year. What do you think it means to the GWS window? Well, look, I think it's a blow to the Giants, but they've got other options. So ideally they would have liked it. It feels like they need another key forward. So they're looking at it without Finlayson now. They're relying on Himmelberg and Jesse Hogan, which probably leaves them a bit light on for size in that forward half. But I still think they've got other options if they don't get lobbed because they've got three pure Ruckman on their list with Kieran Briggs, Matt Flynn and Braden Proust, who we haven't even seen yet. So maybe the option for me is one of those. Has to, they can play the two of them in the same side, Kingy. Maybe have one playing as a full forward, whichever one they think's got the best forward craft, and another one playing in the ruck. And maybe that way they still get that extra big beast in the in the goal square that can take a bit of the workload off Jesse Hogan and Himmelberg. It puts some time to Jake Riccardi as well. Riccardi's he's, he's another yeah. wild card that could, could just strike. I mean, his first couple of games are really exciting. Yep. Hit the scoreboard. But I don't think they're that far away. Why, why are we worrying about their windows so much? I think they've, you know, they, they were that far away from... Yep. You know, Toby Green gets a for the major major game at the end mm. of the year. If he plays, I mean, that, that whole game shifts. Jesse Hogan was injured in that weeks. game as well. Yeah. The yeah. last six or seven weeks was fantastic. Ralphie, this strikes me as a bit of the Sydney Swans and Joe Danaher. It feels like the Giants never really wanted Lob. Fremantle never really wanted to lose Lob. And this was his management and the player pushing a move. I think you're right. And look, there's no doubt that they could have found the money next year. So Bobby Hill's going out on a deal which will be worth about 400000 next year. And I think what Colin thought was, OK, this bloke's coming in at four fifty five hundred. It's only $100,000. So what gives? But I think they've signed up a lot of their players in um, uh, clearly in Hopper and Kelly and Taylor this year and Cornelio the, the year before. Clearly they didn't have money in the next few years. They've had to back end some deals as they've been able to do for so long mm -hmm. and it just didn't work from their finances. The biggest question of all time is how did Lobb achieve $700,000 a year from Fremantle? for any given year, let alone a four or five year contract. He's probably been the luckiest player in the competition. So he had one great year and he got very well paid. Great under his year. Uh, 2016 was a 29 goals. Uh, it got paid well then. I'm not saying he justified it. On but, potential though. But he got it? paid on potential and then he went home to Fremantle on a four year deal. He got paid there again. And so look, it must be said, he is prepared to take a pay cut and he was, and he was absolutely going to do that. They just The deal isn't there for him. He's been lucky, but at least you've got to give him credit for actually wanting to get into a premiership window and win that flag. And you say $700,000 a year, and that would hurt other clubs, but the Dockers have salary cap room, so it's not like it's crippling the Dockers to keep him, Kingy. You can't pay $700,000 a year to players who, who are just also runs on your list. He, he's hardly commanded half that money. I agree. It's too much for what he's worth, but it's not hurting them at the moment. Well, it always hurts you. I mean, well, how? How does it, it not hurt you? Well, because they've got so much space in their salary cap. They're happy to absorb, not happy, they're content to absorb one player who's on a bit more than he's worth because at the moment they're not necessarily in this premiership window. If he was at a Collingwood last year or, or, or a club that has a tight salary cap, it would really hurt, but it doesn't really hurt I them. think you can front load all sorts of contracts. Some of these younger players that are coming out of uh, up for negotiation in the next couple of years are going to command significant cash and get ahead of that. Mm. Um, they don't have that luxury because they're, they're back-ending some of these, these players that aren't really uh, impacting their wins and losses. Yeah. What it says to me, though, the Giants obviously believe they're in the premiership window. If they've gone after Rory Lobb to help them full forward, Chad Wingard, who we touch on, they've gone after him. Clearly, they think now's their time to strike with the current list they've got. You know, they've signed up Toby Green and Canelio and Whitfield and yeah. Kelly, etc. I, I like at least they're being really active and trying to, to, to get a, a side that they think could win a flag. You're a big North Melbourne man, David King. <laughs> we know that. Uh, what are your thoughts on them knocking back... Uh, a, a trade that would have given the Adelaide Crows pick one. Yeah, well, let, let's talk about what it is because yeah. it's all about Jason Horn. Everyone says pick one. It's, let's call it what it is. It's Jason Horn. It's not a godfather offer. 
So step through it. So I'm hearing different reports and, and it's frustrating to hear. This is exactly what it is. So they're asking the Kangaroos to give up Jason Horn, a generational midfielder. You said the other night, clearly the best player yep. in this draft yep. by some margin. So they'd give up him and they'd get the Adelaide's pick four this year, which effectively will be pick six with the, the two bids that are going to come in uh, for Dacos and for Darcy. They get next year's first round from Adelaide, which on this year's ladder position will be pick four. An unknown. We don't know whether that's going to slide or what that's going to do. And the, the swap of first round picks or first and second round picks, first round, which is Melbourne's first round pick, would be pick 18 on this year's numbers. Kangaroo's second round pick would be pick 19 on this year's ladder position. So that eight, so pick 19 you, becomes pick 18. Spot. You go one spot. So effectively, you give up the star from this year yeah. and pick up probably one extra player in the first round early next year. It's hardly a godfather offer. I, I think it's posturing. I think the Adelaide Crows now have the luxury in a couple of years' time to say to Jason, <coughs> hey, listen, we offered three first round picks for you. <laughs> Never going to get the deal done. Matter yeah. of fact, if the Kangaroos had done that deal, You'd be ringing those guys in the recruiting department or the list management department and you'd be saying, leave your keys at the door on the way out. <laughs> that, that is just not how you rebuild a list. So, not surprising. They don't, I, I would be staggered if they don't come with another offer. Yep. There's plenty of time to do that before the draft, but that, that's just not going to get it done. So, here's about how it's been put to me. Now, North Melbourne basically said to themselves, this bloke's bulletproof. You know, he, he might not be Judd or Hodge or Dangerfield, but on face value, that's how, how good his junior year has been. So, this is their equation. Imagine walking into Arden Street every Monday morning for the next 15 years Watching going, him play. we passed that, that bloke. Now, <laughs> yeah, some of us yeah. have had nightmares about Tambling versus Buddy. You know, that's the kind of equation they considered. Yeah. So, the Richmond offer, the second offer that was put to them, 7, 15, 26 and Coleman Jones, who you're getting anyway. So, back factor in the father-son bids, you push it back to 9, 17, 28. These are the plays in the last three years that went at those picks. Chase Jones, Sam Sturt, Xavier Halloran in 2018. Are you swapping a star for them? Liam Henry, Brody Kemp, Josh Worrell last year or the year before last. And last year, Archie Perkins, Ollie Henry, Sam Berry, all very nice players. You want the generational star, the talent, and Kingy, you want to keep your job as yeah. a recruiter. Yeah, I just think it's a no-brainer. This kid, he may go back to Adelaide in a few years, he may, but you've got to take the risk as a football club to back your environment in. Comes in with a whole host of other young stars on the rise and, and just see if you can see if you can spike as a group, create a culture of, of your own. Yeah, We've seen what Sam Walsh has already done to Carlton. We saw what Matt Rao at the start. You know, yeah. he's, he's added, but this is what Porn Francis will do to the Kangaroos. He'll make, he'll make a difference straight away to that football club. Speaking of high draft picks, Hawthorne. Ralphie, are there any chance to offload one of Mitchell, Wingard, Gunston or or O'Meara, the big four? Not at this stage. So you can't be involved in a fire sale if the blokes for sale don't catch fire with the rivals. And that certainly hasn't happened right now. Or well, more to the point, those players haven't wanted to go to those clubs. So Port Adelaide had some very early interest in Jagger O'Meara. It was fleeting. Now there was the Ken Hinckley connection. Both of them were at Gold Coast. That doesn't seem to have progressed any uh, any further. Chad Wigard is absolutely resolute despite GWS officially having interest. He's just not leaving. Now their football boss in Rob McCartney tonight was adamant that if an offer came up for any player the club would uh, be considering, they would go straight to that player. Are you interested? If he says no, done. That deal is absolutely finished. And so so, look, the issue for me is if they can't improve that draft hand. 5, 21, 24, you know, they're OK picks. But they probably wasted last year when they thought they could win a flag. A really constructive year this year, bringing the kids in. What if they waste next year as well with players that basically know they were being heavily shopped around and they just couldn't find a, a suitor for them? Yeah, I suppose the question is really for Hawthorne. They can trade these players. They maybe just have to ask for not as much in return. So what's the question is, what's worse, Kingy? Keeping these players on their list for another year and, and really maybe going nowhere and trying to do it again next year, or just taking what they can get for, the, for these players now. And it might not be a top 10 pick. It might be a pick around 20. What's, what's the lesser of the two evils? Do you think it'll be around 20, though? I don't know. I've got no idea. Surely they would. Surely a club would come pick 20. That's absolutely fine. For, for who? Jago Romero. That's a bargain for the club that's getting him. I would have yeah, thought. Well, Bruce 31, Gunston 30, Mitchell 28, O'Meara 28. Yeah. The, 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 you're not going to get high... You're not getting pick 20 for those guys. I'm sorry. You're not. I think you're getting deeper than that. Um, you know, clubs... It, it's a buyer's market at the moment. Mm. I think this is, this is the system we've created. The system favours the player rather than the club. Like, Sam Mitchell should be able to walk into this football club and say, look, I want to purge some of these players. Let's see what we can get for X, Y and Z. Hopefully you get, you get a, a good market and you do get some picks in the 20s and you get an opportunity to start the rebuild instantly. But because we allow the players to hold uh, full control, this list is on, ho is on hold now. Uh, they re it'll be a five, six year rebuild because of the way we design this. And I don't even know if it suits the player. I don't know if it's great for, for Gunston to finish this way or Tom Mitchell to, to go through four years of what? 
of just playing good footy that has no consequence when they've got more to offer and success. But if they wanted to leave, they'd say club. so. They'd say, Tom Mitchell would say, I want to go, or Chad Wingard would say, I want to go. He's, surely it's good for Hawthorne that Wingard wants to play for them. Yeah, but what are you about? You're about winning premierships. Mm. Yep. The club's there to set up to win the next flag. For the, you know, you're not going to get anything for these guys if you, if you fire sale them like that, probably. But I think that the clubs have to have control. This is the old argument about whether you're able to trade players in, in contract. contract. And yeah. if you are, what does it do? Well, I'll tell you what it does. It brings an eight-year rebuild back to about four if you yep. get it right. So the Wingard would go then. If essentially, you're saying if we can trade players in contract, Wingard doesn't have a say whether he wants to go to the Giants or not. I think you'd have other, you'd have clubs doing different things. I mean, everyone's talking about what Geelong have done the last few years. So Geelong might say, we're going to keep going down this path. Not saying they would, but what if they got Gunston and, and, and Wingard in? at the end of this year and stayed that, that older approach. Who says that doesn't have success quicker than the, the absolute rebuild? Going back to square one because it just takes so long. But how many would he trade? Oh, I think Sam Mitchell was really keen to keep. Clearly he's captain in McAvoy. He wants to keep some of the senior leaders in uh, Bruce and also Liam Shield. But how many would he have traded of those next four players there who, who all have real currency? Well, I think you have the conversation. Uh, it's an, it's a, if no, it's you a, said if you're not if having the conversation. If you could trade them against their will, would he potentially trade all four of those uh, you know, the likes of Gunston, of course, and uh, O'Meara and Wingard and Mitchell. Well, you'd, you'd probably keep... You'd probably keep two or five, okay. yep. I'd say, and, yep. and create a culture around those guys and let them lead, and you choose which two they are. But, I mean... What's, what's the point? You ask the players, are, is there any inclination to go to another club and have a, another crack at a flag? Try and get, you know, do what Sean Higgins has done last year. You know, do it. These guys have been to the top, so maybe it's not as important for them. So, so why doesn't Wingard want to go? It, it is certain now that if Chad Wingard stays, he will not win a premiership at that football club. Jack Gunston's the same, but Jack Gunston's won, I think, all three yeah. of those Hawthorne flags. Why are those blokes keen to stay? And, you know, clearly it's about loyalty, which is not a bad thing. Well, it's only Wingard at the moment that we believe is keen to stay and he's knocked yeah. back the offer and that's because, as you said, obviously he doesn't want to go to Sydney or doesn't <laughs> yeah. want to play the Giants. So he might want to go to Essendon yeah, or... Yeah, but I'm sure what, yeah. you believe the others are all open to offers, aren't they? Well, not necessarily um, open, all of them, but I think Jack Gunston, he's a, he's a professional. He would look at it if the club came to him. I mean, it, each player is very different. Tom Mitchell's put his foot down that he wants to stay as well. You've reported that, Ralphie, as well. When early in the year, he was open to it. So I think it depends what player you're talking about. Do you, do you think it's a better look what's happening now or being sensible enough about it for, to be able to trade in contract because it's an, it's an yeah. ugly side of the game right now where Sam Mitchell's mm. talking to, to other coaches about taking some of these players. I actually don't mind trading in contract, but, Joey, my view is that you shouldn't be able to trade players in contract that are on base payments. I think it's unfair to send someone who's $110,000 a year with a young family around mm. the country against their will. But then you set... Yeah, there's a deeper argument yeah. than we'll have today, but you can't set your competition up around your bread roll leaders. The, the bottom 5 to 10% of agree the competition. Agree with you, yep. Yep, agree You've got to set that. it up to make the competition the best it can be. It's a good discussion, and one we have every year, but it is highlighted even more because of the Hawks' plight at the moment. They're looking to rebuild pretty quickly. Joey, your money ball, what have you got for us tonight? Yeah, well, just a, another money ball scenario where we're going to compare two players, and we've just been talking about the Hawks, but if you have a look at these comparisons of two players, you look at Jack Steele's numbers there on the left, and we know how amazing of a year he had. Robbo had him, I think, rated 8 in his top 50 players for the year. The guy on the right, you look at his numbers and they're not too dissimilar for the season 2021. And we've had a look at this player and that's why I'm surprised that there aren't more clubs queuing up to have a crack at Jager O'Meara. He's still only 27 years of age. He'll be 28 early next year. I think it's underrated the year that he had. I think he is still a high-quality player, Kingy. I know you said maybe the club wouldn't give up a top-20 pick for him, but I'm telling you, some of these clubs in the premiership window, he could be the difference. For who? Like, well, Richmond, where we know a, a one midfielder away with, you know, what, what they're after. Port Adelaide, we know, are probably a midfielder short. The Sydney Swans, I think, could do worse. They're not, you know, asking if Jager O'Meara is available. If one of these clubs around this premiership mark could get their hands on this player, I think he's underrated. I still think he's got some quality football left in him. He had an underrated season, and I think he's, he's a high talent, and I'm surprised there aren't more clubs, Rolfie, asking if he's available. Yeah, if Port Adelaide have gone, Port Adelaide have gone cold in him, I don't really know why. I just mm, think yeah. he's perfect for them. Yeah. They're talking about Xavier Dersmer playing in as a centre square midfielder. Xavier Dersmer is just an elite wingman. Now, yep. I want to see more of Rosie and Butters in the centre square, but I think he brings them in and he comp compliments them, and they can still play their roles forward and wing, and he's just the, the inside midfielder there, along with Ollie Wines. 
Ralphie, you broke the story on the weekend on Saturday with Mark McGowan in the Herald Sun that Bobby Hill wants to play for Essendon. Where's that deal at? Uh, so Essendon is prepared to offer a couple of picks potentially in the 50s or maybe they feel like he's uh, rated about a pick 35 to 40. Now, there's been talk around that they would only offer a third rounder. Look, I think right now what they're doing uh, is just waiting for GWS to say, this is exactly what we want. Um, it's confusing. Now, Tom, you reported on Friday that he did want a, a, a broker a trade. Yeah. I think a lot of list managers out there are saying, well, well, he's probably known for three months. Why was it that he waited until the Friday of, uh, of this trade period to say, I'm out? It makes it more difficult to broker a trade. Yeah, it's confusing. It's confusing for GWS, I think, because they didn't see it coming. Uh, and it makes it hard for Essendon as well. If they've got two picks in the 50s, as they do, Joey and Kingy, they've got uh, pick 51 and 56. That's probably not enough to get Bobby Hill done. They probably need pick 35, which they don't have at the moment. Yep. He's not a star yet, but I, but I still think that he's got absolutely serious talent there. Now, uh, look, what it does for Essendon, if they can get this done, is it rounds out a battery of small forwards there. Now, they haven't had a star forward, a pure small forward, for a very long time. But you, you think about them in two years. Hill and Tipping Woody kicking 30 each. Cox pushes forward off a wing, maybe he kicks 15 or 18. You know, Jake Stringer and Archie Perkins with that wink, wink, nudge, nudge. They swap forward midfield. I just think they can be so dynamic. And so, look, here are Essendon's goal kickers through the Premiership years. I'm not saying it's a Premiership forward sign <laughs> just yet, but Heard, Carousella, Mercury, Blumfield, Moorcroft in 2000, um, Salmon, of course, the key position forward, Buick, Kickett, Heard, Watson, Mercury, Plain, Simmons. Now, you don't quite need that absolute superstar forward. He's very handy, but right now, until they get him, if it's Ben King or someone else, you know, this is what they can do in the next couple of years. But I get the feeling you're not convinced on Bobby Hill yet. Not convinced? Uh, probably not. Uh, look, a guy that averages nine disposals a week can cause some, some chaos down there, but you can't be convinced. That can yeah. be, no, I mean, I'm not critical. I don't I'm think just it's an unfair assessment d yeah. to not be convinced. D just on what you said before about clubs being able to trade players against their will, why can't the in, GWS... In contract, sorry, yep. Yeah, either way, why can't the Giants trade Hill to a Victorian club of their choice if he wants to leave for compassionate reasons? Well, that's the argument, mm. isn't it? I mean, you, you have to please the player at the moment. So if you trade in contract, you don't have those discussions. Yeah. You just get the deal done. Yeah. And just on that one as well, Colin Young, 20 minutes ago, he said, you think we didn't talk to all the Victorian clubs? Now, clearly, there were three suitors. Essendon made the most sense. Essendon were a club that were prepared to broker a trade. So, look, I know, in theory, if you could get a better trade from someone else, but I think Essendon was the club that was prepared to pony up. What's the, what's the max? What's the ceiling for Bobby Hill? Well, I think he's got the talent to be a dangerous small forward, but I like a lot of those small forwards. It's very hard to play consistently high. Well, I mean, Tip and Woody's a great example. He's a terrific player at his best, but that role is quite hard to play. But I agree with you, Ralphie, with the Essendon and forward line. I think we've seen it with the teams that played in this year's grand final. I don't think necessarily any longer you need the superstar key position player to kick 100 goals, 80 goals that we've seen in the past. I think now with the way that teams play, King, if you play a high turnover game, you can create different avenues to goal. You look at the Melbourne forward line, the Western Bulldogs forward line. If you've got an even spread of players, you can still win premierships without having a superstar key position player. So maybe that's the path the Bombers go down if they can't get Ben King. Do, do you think they should be saving their cash to land a key position power forward? Well, I think it helps if you've got that flexibility, absolutely. Yeah. So 400,000 is a lot for a small a forward that we haven't yeah. seen We haven't seen much, you know, high level of consistency. He hasn't from. destroyed games. No. He may yep. do it, but yep. he hasn't just yet. There's no contract, so there's no trade offer yet from Essendon to the Giants, but uh, we expect that to come over the next 24 or 48 hours. Pat Lipinski found a new home today, Ralphie. That's right, a lot of haggling. Now, uh, I think um, Western Bulldogs want to pick 36. Uh, they were prepared to give up a couple of pick 50s. In the end, 43. Seems about right, given he just hasn't played a lot of football. So, look, his VFL stuff, he's absolutely off the charts. Amazing. I know that sounds funny, but this is what um, the Collingwood Footy Club thinks he can be in the midfield. So, he'll play a little bit of inside midfield, he'll play a little bit of wing. Now, he was probably pushed out to the wing by the Western Bulldogs. He just wants to play footy. And I think he's a really serious addition to that midfield there with Nick Dacos coming in. Josh Dacos was probably just OK this year, but with Sidebottom and Pendlebury and Adams and Dugowie, who now is a bona fide midfielder, their midfielder is going places with the likes of Reef McGuinness and Caleb Poulter and um, even Finn McRae. They've got some depth in that midfield. Well, it's a perfect money ball selection. You're getting a, a talented player at pick 43 that you can speculate with. You know, he's got a high ceiling. Whether he reaches that level, we'll find out, but it's worth it. That's worth a shot. So I like it from Collingwood.
I'm surprised. He's 190 centimetres. So yeah. he's got the flexibility to play in a number of spots, as you touched on, Ralphie. So it's a good get by the Pies. And he played 11 games this year. So just, they just want to play these guys. Yeah. They want to find out how good they are themselves, personally. So his best game for the year was against Collingwood. So no yes. surprise. <laughs> yeah. Didn't the dogs anyway. offer him three years and he said no? Yep. Yeah. So he just wants to play. And Carlton Jones had a great game too against, uh, I think, the North Melbourne mm. Footy Club. So it's amazing how that happens. This is the greatest mystery in football. I want you to solve it for me. How is it that Mason <laughs> Cox, the tallest Mason player Cox. in the competition, cannot be a good or even a very good uh, AFL Ruckman. So this year he played seven games, 23 total hitouts. Last year he played 11 games, 34 total hitouts. We know it's because of Brody Grundy. He attended one in 50 centre bounces for the Pies this year. So surely he's, he's a better option for the Pies and for, for the secure than, say, Paul Hunter. In Brisbane think that Darcy Fort's their man to play alongside Oscar McInerney. This bloke is going to a good home for free. There are no takers. Probably signs with Collingwood. Why is it that he can't play Ruck? <laughs> Oh, I've got no idea. <laughs> it's a mystery for a reason. I mean, he's had opportunity, and for whatever reason, he hasn't taken those opportunities. And this is the problem. You, you, you become a bits and pieces player. You never lock down a position as such. And yeah, it's it's a shame for Mason because he, he can do some things. You know, deep forward, he's been more of a, a challenge than he has in the ruck. I'm not sure their their clearance work has ever been absolutely marquee. Um, but just because you're tall doesn't mean everyone should chase you, John. <laughs> Gives you a pretty good chance, though.